Well, what's up guys? In today's video, we're gonna be going over on how to future-proof your computer build for the next five years. But before we do that, please be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. You guys can share this video out. But my last one did pretty good, about at 8,000 views, just trying to grow my channel piece by piece, so I appreciate it for all of you that are viewing and returning to view. Um, but let's get into this thing. So, looking at the comments on the last video that I did on the build, on the PC build, um, I noticed a lot of people saying, hey, this is my build. Will it last for the next four years? Uh, is this good enough? This is what I think about building. What do you think? Not only that, but a lot of people in, uh, that I know just personally are asking, hey, how is this going to run games in five to ten years? What's going to happen um, with this? Do I need to upgrade every year? You know, If I'm going to spend $3,000, $2,000 on a PC, I want it to last me five to ten years because you look at councils, their lifespan is anywhere from five to ten years, and you know you buy a PS4 for five hundred bucks, um, and your PC for twelve to thirteen hundred bucks. It may perform better now, but in five years, it's irrelevant. And the PS5 is still running pretty good. I don't believe that's going to happen, but we're going to take a look at some of the things that we can do to help improve our chances of having a better build for the next five years, um, because technology is advancing so fast. The gap between now and five years ago, performance may have 2 x But from here to the next five years, performance can 3, 4, maybe 5 x because technology always grows faster, improves year over year because we have more technology, we understand it better, more da data. All these things that go into it are able to progress further every single generation that we're seeing. And we just recently seen that with the Ryzen 5 series that just came out the 10th, in, uh, 10th generation Intel. Not only that, the new graphics cards that just came out from NVIDIA and AMD, they both are leaps and bounds ahead of their previous generation, um, which is actually really solid um, for the future of technology and gaming and where it's going. We have VR coming that is becoming way more relevant in everyday life. Um, a lot of them are self-built units, but a lot of them that are better quality take a PC to run. And I foresee a lot of virtual reality and racing simulators becoming more of the norm in the future years. So some things that I think are kind of irrelevant to this argument of, hey, five-year relevance, um, your case. Um, if you have a good case and it's standard and it's not anything special, this is something that you don't have to worry about the next four to five years. Just make sure you have plenty of room um, for everything that you want. Uh, and this can be something that's good for 10, 20 years if you really don't mind keeping the same case. Um, power supply. You can future-proof this a little bit by buying more wattage than what you need, um, but you know, if you buy an 850, 1000 watts power supply, that should be good for the next five years, but you never know because the power-hungry NVIDIA cards that we just seen are a leaps and bounds above the previous generation. So more performance usually means more power, um, just like anything out there with technology or cars or um, anything always going to need more power to become more powerful. But with that, they also could become more efficient where they don't need as much power. So kind of watching what's happening over the next two to three years will kind of put you in this, hey, is my power supply good enough or do I need to think about upgrading when I upgrade my computer? Uh, right now, a lot of people are upgrading their power supplies because the cars are power hungry. Um, but in five years, they might become more efficient and might not need so much power in order to run just as efficiently. So power supply is one of those issues where it might could be might be good enough for the next five years, but depending on the development and how much power draw the waters they need for the board, these chips, the cards, they are always needing more power. So five years, we might need 2,000 watt power supplies, even though that may sound ridiculous and non-fathomable, but it could happen if you see how technology is going now we're at 850 to 1000 to run a good CPU and a 3080 or 3090 you're going to need these power supplies in the future in order to get the best performance out of the cards so with technology advancing I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see more power needed to run systems so resulting in bigger power supplies and then along with that RAM most motherboards nowadays have four DIMM slots, so you don't really need to worry about it because you always have a path upgradability. Unless you're running like a 4x4 four four to get 16 gigabytes of RAM, then you might be in trouble later down the road. But most people are running, you know, two sticks of eight, or they're running four sticks of eight to give them 32. 
which right now 16 gigabytes is sufficient enough we haven't seen any major jumps with this it's been more focused on the speed is usually the issue um, rather you know performance difference between a 2100 hertz memory to a 3000 or 3000 to 4000 megahertz the performance difference there that's been the biggest deal so unless we see a significant jump in that ram shouldn't be too worried about uh, your upgrade path just really buy you know dual channel two sticks of memory so you have the path to upgrade later to four uh, sticks of memory if you want to get more ram for the future of gaming which that brings us to our ne next part the motherboards this is something that's going to change over uh, so many years what's been nice about amd over the last five years is they use the same socket so what that means is that over the last five years every time they upgrade their cpu to a new generation you can use the same motherboard with a simple bios flash um, this is convenient for people who have an upgradability path that want to you know, buy the best CPUs out in the market. They're able to do that without buying the new motherboards. But that's coming to the end of its lifespan, and the next generation of processors, we might see a change in socket type um, in order to advance in the future. So what you really want to look at a CPU is the performance it's getting now. And then in five years, we're hoping that it should be relevant. Ryzen 5 3600 one thing that you can get your hands on it's budget friendly it's got great performance i foresee this being a chip that will last five years and beyond that i mean it's been on the market since september of 2019 and we've seen the new generation of processors come out which yeah there's a performance boost but this chip still runs every single game at 1440p or 4k it doesn't have hiccups it's a great budget friendly chip and I think it's one of my favorite chips. If I'm gonna build a system, I'm starting with the Ryzen 5 3600. It checks all the boxes for me that an everyday average user needs. Now, if you're a video editor or you know extreme CPU intense items that you're doing on your PC, maybe you need something more, but for an everyday user, that is a sweet spot for me. Um, but the 5600 is gonna be coming out where you're actually able to get your hands on it. I mean, it's out now, but it's near impossible to get unless you're in front of it, the computer every single time it comes out, or you're part of a group that somebody is secondhand selling it, but then you're paying more than what the MSRP is for it. So these are certain things you're looking for, but this chip being out for you know two years is going to be a chip that's going to last five years. I'm comfortable with saying that because I truly believe in it. And I see some of these computers that are running, you know, still running FX 6300s in their PC and they're not getting any problems at 1080p but with the future going you're going to 1440p is going to become the new standard here over the next few years in my opinion like 1080p is currently so most people are running 1080p you know if they're getting 60 frames a second it's absolutely playable some people are getting you know 120 140 200 frames a second you start bumping up to 1440p you do see a performance decrease in frames but the quality gets better so I mean, it depends on what you want to go for. So these chips will stay relevant for a while. I think the Ryzen 5 and Intel 9th gen are still relevant, even though the new generations have came out. So don't run out there and spend your money to upgrade when you currently have a CPU that's going to be good for five years. Unless we see a significant boost in performance over the next generation, which you never know we might see, and the games are starting to utilize that new technology better, I think we're currently safe with the Ryzen uh, 5, 1000 series, 3000 series, and Intel's 8th, 9th, and 10th generation in order for the next five years. So any of those things that will actually fit your everyday use should be good for five years. I always like to go price per, for, for, for performance, and that's where it lands at the 3600 until we can get our hands on the 5600 for everyday users. So just keep that in mind when you're selecting your CPU. A lot of these should be safe and shouldn't have to think twice. Now for the next part, GPUs, this is something that is in, on everybody's mind upgrading. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that are upgrading their graphics card right now. Obviously, we see it in the market with the demand for them, the scalpers getting all of them, charging double the prices. People are still paying whatever they can to get their hands on it. In the state of the world right now, we're also seeing price increases on performance parts of her PCs across the board. But the graphics card is the key component to any build. So you got to buy something that's going to be relevant for now for five years. 
and are you going to choose 1080p or are you going to go 1440p? In my opinion, 1440p is the way of the future. I think that's going to be the new standard, just like I said before. But how many cards can handle that? Can 1070 handle running, you know, 1440p? Probably not, or they're going to struggle, and you're not going to get very good frames. So with the 2070, let's just say you go 2070, the frames per second at 1440p, still playable. Now, you got probably three more years on that card before we're at the five-year mark of it. How is it going to perform then? I don't believe it's going to have a problem. I know they're still running solid out there. They're still getting 140, 150 you know, plus frames on a lot of games at 1080p. So when you kick it up to 1440p, maybe you're getting 90 or 100 frames. Unless your death need on the frames, you're going to probably play at 1440p because the card can't perform in it. Even 4K, it can still hit 4K numbers. You could probably be in the 60 frame per second range with the 2070 on most games at 4K. So this card's going to be relevant for a while. Now, getting your hands on them is another is another problem. 3000 series are few and far between. Uh, even AMD's you know new technology with the 6800s, it's few and far between also. So really, it's about availability and future proofing. So I'm comfortable with saying you know 20 series, you know 2070, 2060. 2080, 2080 Ti, all those cards are still going to be relevant in three to four years. It, it is. And then you can upgrade for when the next generation comes out because you know you're going to see performance boost year after year after year on these cards. It just depends on how big they are. Between the 10 series and the 20 series, the performance gap wasn't really that big. But from 10 series to the thir uh, 3000 series, for NVIDIA, it's been a huge jump. It's been a huge gap. And that's where people are upgrading. They're skipping the 20 series and going straight to the 30 series. So I think this is the big step for upgrading. I think the next generation, you'll see a small performance boost. And then after that generation, you're going to see a bigger performance jump as we did over the 10 series to the 3000 series for NVIDIA. So there's a few things that we want to kind of pay attention for. If you can get your hands on a NVIDIA 3000 series at the MSRP price, great. Grab it because the price to performance is phenomenal and a lot of people are still selling 27 28 ti's for the same price you can get a 3070 or 3080 if you can get it at msrp so if you can snag a brand new one and kind of just take a day or two to really say hey i'm gonna watch every single website and be part of discord groups be part of facebook groups use their social media to your power in order to snag a 3000 series do it because their price for performance is the best and these cards performance now is going to be relevant for five years i do believe i don't think that we're going to see gaming technology advance as much as we're going to see um, that this card can put out we see these cars are performance monsters um they've had driver issues and kind of underperforming but those things are starting to get worked out as time goes on so these cards i think are going to be great for the next five to ten years they're capable of 4k you know at anywhere from 60 to 100 frames depending on the game this is going to be relevant for five years if you can snag a 3000. But if you can't, you can only get second hand market from the 2070 series, do it. Also, you can wait for the second hand market when the new generation comes out. There's always going to be those people out there that want to upgrade for the newest, biggest, baddest GPU they can find for their PC just to see the performance. Well, with their second hand parts, they usually sell them on the market. And for what their people are paying for them, you're probably going to be able to get them for some unbelievably cheap prices here in the next three to five years um, once the new generation comes out and these go to the secondhand market. And there's things you can do. A lot of the settings right now in games have RTX on. You want to get more performance on your older cards. Make sure all your RTX, you know, ray tracing's off on all the options uh, to get better if you don't care about those types of things. Um, I know a lot of those settings make minimal differences in the game that you know when you're playing it you may not notice it unless you're really looking at detail but they're they're straight on the card if you turn rtx on you see a frame drop there's no doubt about it we see it on the new call of duty cold war we see it on cyberpunk we see on all these games that it is high demanding for these cards to do ray tracing um and it's a big uh performance hit uh to your card so if you want better performance for longer you just got to deal with less ray tracing you know all the shadows, all the reflection surfaces, all those types of things that are in games that may not be necessity in order to play them. Um, but 
is a major performance to the card. So these are options that you could turn off in the future that will help your card perform better for longer. Um, but you have to, you know, sacrifice some options that uh, these game developers are presenting in order to make the game look visually better. So it depends on what you're doing. I believe anything that you put together now is going to be relevant in five years. There's no way that the councils are going to be able to outperform PCs in five years. It just, it's not going to work. With all the settings and all the perks to a PC first the council, it's just the gap's too big. I love that the new systems are a big jump between the PS4 to the PS5 it is a massive jump. So I think that's great. But I do believe PCs are going to be the master race just like always. Um, maybe I'm a fanboy. Um, after switching from council to PC, it's just there is no difference. It's no comparison. I'm not even looking for a PS5 with the new Xbox, because I have my PC, there's no need for it. it. Runs games better, faster, stronger. Not only that, the multitasking, the apps that you're able to use, uh, music selection when you're playing games, Discord, there's just so many perks of having a PC that there's in no way that the new consoles are going to take over PCs. Now, the price and performance for the consoles are phenomenal, but um, if it was me, I'd spend a little extra money to buy the PC, something that you could do every day or use every day, and kind of have multitasking functionality. Um, videos, playing games, communication, editing videos, searching, doing research, working from home, all these different types of things you can have an all-in-one station and a PC rather than uh, a PS5 or and the new Xbox. Just doesn't, doesn't even compare. So if I'm gonna advise anybody to buy a new console, I'm probably gonna tell them don't buy the console, buy the PC. The only reason I'm going to purchase a PS5 is God of War. Um, fanboy of that game forever and a half. The exclusives on PS5 is the only really reason I might buy, I'm might i going to buy one. And that's a lot of reasons other guys are buying it. Um, Xbox doesn't have that feature. Why buy the new Xbox when you have Xbox Game Pass on your PC and you can play all the games that you want on the Xbox, on the Game Pass. And not only that, the new games on PC, they just end up looking better, performing better. And you have less worry to, to worry about. Uh, so I think PC is the way to go. And then VR. VR is becoming more relevant. Though I don't see cards out there struggling to push VR in virtual reality um, to kind of get the best performance. But we are seeing the technology improve. Resolution. Uh, real world simulation. All those types of things are becoming more relevant. Um, and we got to kind of see how this is going to progress over the next few years. Uh, it's kind of slow growing right now over the last five years. We've seen little improvements here or there. But as we know with technology, it only grows bigger, faster, stronger the longer it goes on. So we should start to see big technological gaps in performance or jumps in performance over the next you know, three to five years with VR. Um, I'm noticing it's becoming a lot more popular on social media and on the internet overall that you know it's only going to be the next big trend and it's going to be uh, a big performance boost and maybe new systems new drivers new who knows what to run these things so we got to kind of see what's going to happen in the future so i know the video is kind of long today but i appreciate you guys watching don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button leave a comment down below on what you think uh, and i appreciate it and see you guys next time